It calls out to deep It calls out to deep It calls out to deep
Hey, Crossroads Farm, it is good to be with you tonight. I'm glad you are here on this Sunday night and I hope you'll stay dialed in for the next 22 minutes. I promise to be done, no more than 22 minutes. If it goes to 22 minutes in one second, you have my permission to walk away, but you won't be that lucky because I'm gonna be done before the 22 minute mark. But I'm glad you're here and dialed in. And you know, in a weird way, even though we're not together, even though this is like the official start of spring break for Michigan, Congratulations, spring break. Uh, it kind of feels good that we're meeting even in this uh, forum, even even online like this. It feels a little normal to me and I hope it feels normal to you. And uh, we love you guys, we pray for you, and uh, we hope you're staying connected. And maybe tonight would be a really good night after the lesson to uh, contact some people. If you have a, a care cell, um, contact some people in your care cell, see how they're doing. Uh, call somebody up, have a little discussion group to talk about tonight's lesson. But stay connected, and <clears throat> as always, if you need someone to talk to, leave us a comment, reach out to us on social media. Uh, I, I know many, many of you have been called, and just when you get called, just say, hey, I'm struggling, let us know how we can pray for you, that kind of stuff. So uh, let's keep doing this, and for however long we, we're gonna meet, make sure you're here on Sunday nights to be a part of the community that's meeting together. And uh, I want to encourage you, we're going to have a couple of service, uh, lessons, talks, uh, program nights on these Sundays leading up to Easter. And I want to encourage you, Easter morning is just a couple Sundays away. Um, <clears throat> make sure you are part of an online service at your church uh, for Easter. And if you don't have a church, leave us a comment, reach out to us any way you can, and we'll help get you connected to a church in your area that you can watch Easter online. Uh, what a glorious day to celebrate what God has done for us. And uh, we want to take the next two programs program nights. Uh, tonight, me, next week, Doug, to talk about uh, a couple of guys help us get our minds ready for Easter and the celebration that is. Even though it's going to be different, uh, Easter isn't canceled. What Jesus did still is relevant today. And, uh, and so we want to make sure we're ready for that here at Crossroads Farm in the Northwest where I'm ministry director in South Central, uh, where Doug is, is leading the charge. And, uh, so I'm glad you're here and I hope you'll be a part of Eastern. And again, just get connected. And if you need a church, we'll help you get connected to a church online where you can celebrate Easter with people, even in your town. Uh, and that's kind of an exciting thing. So. But tonight, we're going to kick this off by talking about a character. We're going to talk about uh, Judas uh, from the scriptures. And, and whether you know about Judas or not, almost everybody knows the name because uh, Judas is what we kind of think of as a bad guy. And, and I want to talk to you about Judas leading up to Easter because uh, Judas missed, missed it all. This is a guy that was as close to Jesus as anyone could be, and he missed it all. And I want to make sure you're not missing it all. I want to make sure I'm not missing it all about what it means to be with Jesus. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. And we're going to be done in 22 minutes. Now, now 19 minutes, according to my timer. I got like 18 and a half minutes. We're going to be done. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> here's, here's the thing I, I want you to think about with, with Judas and who he is. Um, Judas, it, it I mean, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, right? If, if you don't know much about the Bible, when, when Jesus kind of came on the scene and started his ministry, he ministered for about three and a half years. That's all, 30 to 33. And during those years, he surrounded himself with his disciples, these like core followers that he was building into their lives, preparing them to, to go after he left, after he was gonna be killed and crucified, buried and risen again, which is why we celebrate Easter, uh, that rising again. Uh, but Jesus knew that was coming and he was preparing his disciples for that. And he took these 12 men and he coached them and trained them and prayed with them and gave them opportunity to serve so that when he left, they could continue the work. Judas was one of those 12 guys. Judas had one of those super close relationships, at least proximity with, with Jesus. But when, when it came time for his crucifixion, it was Judas that would betray him. It was Judas that would sell Jesus for a few bucks, just 30 silver coins, not a lot of money. <clears throat> Later, he would regret that decision and, and take his own life in total despair. And the heartbreak of it isn't that he betrayed Jesus. You know what? There were other disciples that betrayed Jesus. It's that Judas missed what it meant to be with Jesus. And he missed what Jesus was all about. And I wanna make sure we're not missing what Jesus was all about. That, that we don't have the despair and the, the darkness that Judas had because he just missed it. 
And, and you can have it all. You can have it all right in front of you and miss it like Judas did, right? Uh, I, I'm a, I like to play basketball. I like to say I'm a ball player, but if you watch me play, some are like, ah, it's not a ball player, but I like basketball. I like to play ball. I'm a shooter, I'm a streak shooter, right? That means I'll make like 10, 12 in a row and then I'll miss 40 in a row, but I'll keep shooting because I know my next streak's coming. <laughs> and uh, that might explain why I didn't get a lot of playing time growing up. But uh, when, when I was playing that, uh, we did a lot of playground ball when I was a kid and uh, we had a school right next to my house and I used to go play there all the time and I had a buddy, um, we're gonna call him Josh. Uh, <clears throat> not you, Josh Nor. Nice try. Uh, Josh Nor and I didn't grow up together, but maybe he's a baller too. Uh, but my buddy, my buddy that we're going to call Josh, he was a baller. He was a natural shooter. And I remember even in fourth grade when, when most of us could, couldn't get it to the hoop from the three point line, Josh would drain him from three point line in fourth grade. We'd play pig out on the playground and we'd tell Josh, hey, you can't shoot three pointers or you can only shoot one because the rest of us could barely get it up to the hoop from there. But it was so easy for Josh, man. He was just like a natural athlete. And I don't know about you, but I hate natural athletes. Okay, I hate them all. So if that's you, I hate you. Okay, I'm kidding, mostly. Uh, Josh was natural. I hated Josh because he was so good, but he was one of my good friends. And every time we played, I, I wanted to be on his team. Everybody did because he was just that kind of guy. And we got to junior high and, and Josh was probably one of the best kiddies, kiddies, kids in the city is what I was trying to say. And, and he started playing on some of the city league teams for our age. And, and he was clearly head and shoulders above uh, everyone else in his skill level. Uh, we got to high school our freshman year. We went to different high schools and uh, Josh was played half the year on the freshman team. And the second half of the year, he got bumped up to varsity, not junior varsity. He got bumped up to varsity because the kid could play. And uh, <clears throat> everybody in town, the reporters, his coaches, they knew something special was happening. But there was a problem. Josh was relying on that talent. And after his freshman year, uh, his sophomore year, he knew he was gonna make the varsity team. Uh, Josh kind of took the summer off. He, he didn't really play a lot of ball. And when fall came around, he was a little rusty, still an incredible player. But other players now were starting to work hard and other players were honing their skills. And, and here it used to be Josh and everybody else. And midway through sophomore year, it was kind of Josh and everybody else. And by the end of his sophomore year, Josh was still an elite player but among other elite players. By his junior year, Josh had fallen off. And at the end of his junior year, he actually got benched. And even though he was by far the most talented, raw talented player on his team, uh, he quit working. And uh, his senior year, he made the team, but he wasn't even a starter anymore. And uh, he didn't even finish the year out. It was really a sad thing to watch his basketball career kind of end like that. And what had happened is Josh had just quit working. He had everything. He had the talent. He had the mental part of the game. He understood how to play basketball. I've known guys who had talent but had no understanding of the game. He understood it and he had the talent. The only thing Josh lacked was the size and he made up for it by just being a shooter. He was kind of Steph Curry of our high school. I mean, he was that kind of a player. <clears throat> but he blew it. And, and, and I think about Josh when I think about Judas be, because Judas had it all. He was chosen to be in this group, you know, 12 people, kind of like Josh chosen to be on this team of 12 basketball players. Judas had it all. He had the best coach. He had everything and he missed it because he was more interested in what he could get out of it. Judas was asking the question, what can this Jesus guy do for me? And instead of working and growing and being committed to this relationship with Christ, he, he was committed to what he could get out of it. And, and he, he was willing to, to sacrifice it all for 30 coins for, for Josh. He was willing to sacrifice it all. It turned out to be marijuana. He just wanted, that was more important to him. And, and having different kinds of uh, unhealthy and immoral relationships with girls was more important to him than honing his basketball skill and working at it. And he gave that all up for a few temporary pleasures. Judas gave it all up for a few coins. And, and it's a heartbreaking story, right? Like <clears throat> we look at Judas and we think the guy missed it. And yet 
I'm afraid a lot of us are missing it. I'm afraid you might be missing it and, and I might be missing it, even though it's all right in front of us. It's all right there. And, and I want to remind you that, that being in a relationship with God, like being with Jesus is, is kind of this tension that exists between this faith that puts us in this relationship with him and the tension of hard work that comes with that relationship. Uh, we can't enter the relationship through hard work. And if, if you're if you're frustrated and you're like, man, I keep trying to do all the right things and I still don't feel close to God. Well, you're missing it because we get close to God through faith. It, it's faith in our relationship. It, excuse me. It's faith in what Jesus did for us, that Easter story that he died. He was buried. He rose again, paying the price for our sins. We enter into that relationship through faith. But, but then we build that relationship through hard work and, and being committed like any kind of relationship. Tracy and I have been married for 23 years and I'm telling you, it is hard work to be married. It's hard work to be married for a month. <clears throat> it's hard work to be married for a year, for 23 years. And, and, and I know many have been married much longer than we have and, and to have a good, strong marriage relationship, it takes a lot of work and to have a good, strong relationship with God, it begins in faith, nothing we can do, but then it, it requires hard work to stay in it and, and to build that closeness. Judas didn't wanna do the hard work. He, he would rather take the easy path, those natural desires to be lazy, that's natural, that's easy. Being lazy, that's easy. Being greedy, <laughs> that's easy. I just want more and more and more, that's easy. But, but to be in a committed relationship with Jesus Christ, it requires hard work after we've taken that step of faith. And while we continue to grow in our faith, we also continue to grow in the work we put into it. In fact, it's really interesting. I, I did a word study this week uh, um, the words that kind of describe our relationship with God. And it's interesting, a word that came up over and over and over was the word walk. Like we walk in Christ. And, and it, 130 times the word walk is used in the New Testament. And, and at least 30, maybe 40 of those times, and maybe more, it just kind of depends maybe what translation you're looking at. But at least 30, maybe 40 times it, that word walk is used to describe our relationship with Christ. The other times it's like Jesus told someone, hey, take up your mat and walk. And he did a, an amazing miracle or something. But, but at least 30, maybe 40 times in the New Testament, the word walk is used to describe our relationship with, with Christ. And, and what I love about that is when you think about a walk, a walk doesn't happen by accident. You don't accidentally go for a walk, right? You, you go out, you, especially right now, right, in lockdown, uh, you have to go outside. Uh, my, my kids this week, uh, last night, in fact, decided to watch all three Lord of the Rings and all three Hobbit movies in one day, 18 hour movie marathon. And our only rule was that after every movie, they had to get out and walk, go walk the block real quick, do something, right? Walking requires effort, it requires intentionality. Judas didn't want to put in that work to walk with Jesus. My friend Josh, man, he quit putting in the work to be a better ball player. And both of them missed it. Now, missing it on the basketball court, not nearly as critical as missing it with Jesus. And I'm afraid too many of us don't want to walk. We don't want to do the work that it requires. And we miss what's in front of us. Paul says in Galatians chapter five, I, I love this. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the spirit, put in the work that it requires to walk with Jesus. So we don't give in to the desire to be lazy or greedy or selfish but we gotta walk with Jesus. And, and later in that Galatians 5 passage, he would say, oh man, the, the fruit of the spirit is really evident and it stands in contrast to the fruit of the flesh. And we have to walk with Jesus. We have to put in the effort to be with him so we can experience the benefit of being close and we don't end up where Judas is and we miss it all. I, I think it's so striking that you have Judas who betrayed Jesus for a few bucks, right? That same night, Peter would, would totally betray Jesus. Three times he was given a chance to admit that he was friends with Jesus. Three times he rejected him. In fact, the last time the Bible says he called curses down on himself. He, he screamed profanities and called curses down on himself saying he didn't know Jesus. 
And you remember the, the rooster crows, Peter's denied Jesus three times. He's cut to the heart about what he did. He runs off, he weeps, right? But the difference was Peter didn't miss it. He knew who Jesus was. He knew why Jesus came. He comes back to Jesus. In John chapter 21, there's this cool story after the resurrection where, where Peter and the disciples are out on a boat fishing again. They're in despair. They, they, they don't understand what happened. They're frustrated. They're hurt. They're trying to figure it out. And, and Jesus is on the shore and they don't realize it's Jesus initially. And then Jesus does another amazing miracle. They realize it's him. They come to shore and at the shore, uh, Jesus talks to Peter and he says, hey, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter's like, yeah, you know, I love you. And, and they have this amazing moment, probably a very hurtful moment for Peter to be confronted with his betrayal. But he got it. He understood that Jesus wants to be in this relationship with us. And there's only one perfect person in the relationship. It's him. It's not you. It's not me. And Peter understood that when he failed, he could go back to Jesus and he could experience forgiveness. He could go back to Jesus and he could be healed for, for the guilt and the shame that he felt. And Judas was so overwhelmed by guilt and shame because he didn't get it. He wasn't putting in the hard work. Peter was putting in the hard work. He was trying to walk with Jesus. And, and, and I think so many of us are, we've put our faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe you did it at a young age. Maybe you did it at a crossroads farm event, but you've put your faith in Jesus and then you're struggling and you experience shame and you're like, ah, uh, you know, God doesn't want to hear from me. He, he doesn't want to talk to me. You're missing it. He does want to talk to you because he knows he's the only perfect one in this relationship. And, and he wants you to turn back to him. He wants you to turn back to him and, and to say, God, I'm sorry, and to have that relationship restored. He gets it. Don't miss it because you're not putting in the hard work because you're not willing to walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. Uh, Hebrews 12 comes to mind and uh, it, it says right there, it says, we're in this race together. And, and the writer of Hebrews says, so let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us cut out the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And instead of using the walk analogy, I love that the writer of Hebrews goes to uh, the run analogy. I hate running. I hope most of you hate running. It is godly to hate running, okay? <laughs> okay. That might have been a stretch, uh, but but running is hard work. It's like walking. It requires being intentional. It requires being deliberate. It requires us to get rid of things that are hindering our walk. It requires us to cut out the sin that's tangling up our feet and to choose to run with perseverance, chasing after Jesus. And I want to encourage you this Easter, don't miss what's right in front of you. Don't miss what Jesus has done for you and what he's done for me. Judas was as close as anybody could get and he missed it because he wasn't putting in the hard work. I want to challenge you to put in the hard work. Maybe there's something in your life that needs to be cut out right now because it is causing you to stumble. And I want to urge you to cut it out tonight. Remove it from your life. Maybe there's a sin patterning in your life and, and you just need to reach out to somebody and say, help me deal with this so I can walk with Jesus because it's worth it. Maybe you need a running buddy. When my wife and I ran a half marathon together, I was so thankful we were running together because without her, I wouldn't have made half a lap around the track. I would have just called it good, right? But together we ran this half marathon and maybe you need a running buddy. And, and tonight's the night for you to reach out and say, help me, I wanna put in the hard work. And I wanna encourage you to read your Bibles, right? That's part of the hard work of spending time with God. The more we spend time with God, the more we cut out those things and remove the sin that's tangling us up. I wanna encourage you to spend time in prayer. Uh, Danny Ray, many of you uh, remember him from this last fall of the magician. Uh, Danny Ray would say, hey, if you just prayed a, a minute in the morning and the, and the minute in the evening uh, every day, if that's all you did, you know, uh, 
uh, 700 minutes of prayer would happen in, in a year. Over 700 minutes of prayer would happen in a year just from taking that. Imagine your life if you spent 700 minutes intentionally talking to God, and that's just taking a minute in the morning and a minute in the evening. And what if you what if you worked hard? What if you put the time in to, to walk more and, and to pray more? What would your relationship with God look like? I think this time uh, while we're out of what's normal, it's a great time. Uh, pick up a book, contact us and just say, hey, I need a book. What, what, what do you recommend is a good book to read right now? Because walking takes effort, physically and spiritually. <clears throat> and if you're gonna walk with Jesus, if you're gonna be like Peter who goes back to Jesus after you've stumbled and not like Judas who runs away, it requires work. And I wanna encourage you, Put in the work because the life with Jesus is the best life you could ever have that I could ever have. Don't miss it like Judas, but turn back to Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Put in the work. Put in the work so that we can live by Paul's instruction in Galatians 5 to walk with the Spirit and not give in to the desires of the flesh. Not to give in to the easy things, the things that come naturally, right? Naturally, very natural. But to do the things that are supernatural, and that requires being close to God. 22 minutes, almost on the button. We love you guys. We're praying for you. And we hope that you won't miss what Jesus is doing and that you'll take this time to put in the work. Yeah, it's a relationship by faith, and our faith grows through the whole process. But it requires work that we walk with God and we want to encourage you, use this time, reconnect, strengthen your walk, put in the work because life with Jesus is worth it. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the stories, real people who struggled and, and had tension. And, and I think of Judas and God, uh, it's easy to look at him and think, what a loser that he betrayed Jesus, but we betray you all the time. And, and for the same reasons, even though it's right there, even though we have your word, even though we have Crossroads Farm teaching us, even though we have friends surrounding us, maybe many and, and many have good families that are promoting you, we miss it. Help us not to do that anymore. And Lord, help us to put in the work that, that strengthens our faith, to read our Bibles, to pray, God to read good books, to spend time with other Christians who will help us remove the entangling things. Lord, so that we can walk with you. We can run the race you've given us. Help us not to be lazy and to use this time to reorient ourselves, God, to kind of get fixed on you again. Especially as we look to Easter, the great celebration of the greatest moment in history when sin was defeated once and for all, and through your son, Jesus, salvation was made available to everybody. Lord, may we embrace that relationship in faith. May we strengthen it through hard work. All for your praise and glory. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. We love you. God bless you. See you next Sunday night.